Yeah. What is this thing? So this is a San Fran uh, SF25 coffee roaster. So we can roast about 30, 25 to 30 pounds of batch in this machine. Um, and basically put our green beans inside of it. I don't think I have any green beans around here. You know, basically roast it with different temperatures, um, uh, different times, different cooling, into something like this. So. Yeah, it smells great. Woo! That smells good. This is our, this is our singular origin Ethiopian. So we're gonna get a nice like, you know, oak cherry characteristic coming off this, uh, this batch of coffee here as we're we'll releasing next week. Our house blend this is our house blend medium. So it's a little bit different. A little more like peanut butter notes, uh, toffee off of Oh it. yeah, yeah, so. definitely peanut. I, I smell peanut butter in yeah. that. That's so cool. this kind of cool aspect thing, depending on where the origin is. Sometimes we'll blend a uh, 60 40 blend of like Ethiopian and Mexican or Papua New Guinea and Brazil. Um, so those develop our light, our light, medium, and dark house blends. And then we'll start releasing single origins um, to really push the character and push the, uh, the brand name a little bit more. This is, a, this is a first. I've never seen a brewery that had like, you know, a, a cool coffee, a coffee section. This is pretty cool. Yeah. That is pretty, that's pretty cool. You know, you commit to buying. Um, you know, a 150 pound sack of coffee, it's pretty expensive. Um, and sometimes like it doesn't come out the way you want it to. So we got this cool little mini machine over here made by San Fran as well. It's called the SF1. And it mimics the same characteristic that's in the big one over here. So we're able to do like small 500 gram batches uh, to really just try the coffee out make sure we're gonna go all the notes we want out of it, all the character we want out of it, uh, before we commit to buying a big, large batch of it. So, how many pieces have like a small sample machine along with a big machine too? I know, dude. It's it's, it's just so nice in here too. Like everything's everything matches. Like this is dude, this is a really cool spot. Yeah, this is to, really cool. You know, you don't want to make it exactly the same, um, but the branding and the brand power kind of ties together. So it's kind of a cool aspect between. Um, so it's, it's cool like brand extension of Alvarian beer. It's an Alvarian roasting. So it's not just the coffee shop, it's a roastery too. So we're able to, not, not many, you know, there's tons of coffee shops out there. There's not many people actually roast their own beans. I noticed too that you guys are really keeping the New Britain theme here with the honeycomb. Oh yeah. That's that's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. We try to carry that brand power all the way through stuff. So. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so we had this about a year ago too. This is all of our, uh, our private event space. You can host about 60 people on here. So this is your private event room? Yeah, overflow space on the busier nights, the busier Friday and Saturday. So the nights get a little packed in here. If nothing's going on, we're able to open this up to uh, host uh, overflow, or birthday parties, corporate uh, gatherings, anniversary and stuff like that. Kind of gives you the same feel of the brewery uh, with your own personal space. You can bring your own food inside of here, uh, your own tap list, um, kind of run the whole thing. This is so cool. 
So we try to run a very clean, tight net production space here. Um, the system we put in place about a year ago gives us two different things. In the brewing realm, you either go for like mass volume or you have small batch versatility. A lot of places have like pilot systems, which we are going to be bringing on, so on board pretty soon. But this system here um, is actually capable of doing the versatility and volume. So at our lowest level, we're able to brew about a 380 gallon batch. So we can try like other stuff like uh, Belgian beers and saisons and smaller things that don't sell quite a, like a lot, but still are very nice. And then we can turn around and flip the switch and basically brew 2,000 gallons of our flagship beers. Uh, some some beers like our batch uh, fresh here, which we sell across the board. Uh, so we can run some of that, or we can run some, you know, basically half size of small 500 gallon tanks on the end there. So this is a versatility and volume aspect of things. So we can run big flagships, we can run seasonals, we can run experimentals. It gives that versatility of, uh, you know, not a full-blown production brewery, but still a production brewery in that aspect. Uh, Super cool. Yeah. Um, when they, what, a New England IPA, it's, it's like unfiltered? So basically, uh, a lot of our beers are considered unfiltered. Um, we do have a thing called a separator right now. It's not like a true like filter. It's not going through like a filter membrane of some sort. Um, we use it to extract the higher volume off a lot of the beers because you know when you the New England IPAs are hazy and they have like a lot of hop profile to them. There's a lot of hop waste inside of these tanks. So we have um, a machine. That's what these cones are for is to collect all the yeast and, and settlement yeah, and everything. Yeast so yeast and hops on the bottom. And usually this arm here, there's like an arm inside of it we could rotate. Yes. We could actually pull the product off the top of it. But uh, we're one of like I think six or seven breweries in the state right now. We have our own center. Um, so this piece of equipment here where we can actually pump the beer through so from its fermentation vessel to the bright tanks where we carbonate the product we can pump it inside of here and we, the main goal is really to uh, pull all the hop and the yeast material that's inside of these tanks and that separates the hops and the yeast out from the good beer that's inside of there so on every batch we yield about 10 to 12 percent more beer uh, because we're pumping it through there. It is considered a filter, but it's uh, on the realm of stuff, it's actually a separator because we're separating the solid and the liquid away from each other. And trying to keep the micros in the beer so yep. you get those unfiltered Yeah, so we're, we're, we're still get a good hazy New England yes. IPA that has solid body behind it, but we're still yielding all the more product off of it. it makes it a little more shelf stable too because we're removing some of the, like, the actual yeast cells inside there, the stuff you don't want in, your, in your, the finished IPA. Sometimes you get like some IPAs out there and you get a little of that throat or hot burn to it. Yes. This machine will kind of like take care of that. Yeah, and it makes you. it kind of smooth and more of like a subtle floral yeah, nice taste. Yeah, juicy characteristic yes. to it, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yep. Wow. wow. You guys, you, it's it's really clean in here too, man. Yeah. You, you guys keep it keep it really yeah, nice. We, we run a pretty tight ship with everything. So we got our candy line over here. Um, we got our own candy line that could do 12 and 16 ounce cans, about 25, 30 cans a minute depending on what it is. Um, we're on like a dual system, so it's very easy to switch over between 12 and 16s. Uh, machine's probably a 20 minute changeover. And it's a cool aspect of things. And we're able to can pretty much all the product we have. Gives us good versatility because in the craft beer realm nowadays, everybody wants their 16 ounce four pack or you know 12 ounce six pack, stuff like that. So yep. it gives us a good, you know, you guys mainly do 16 ounces? Yeah, it's our main product yeah. line. So it's it definitely, you know, during the, the, the COVID period of uh, you know the shutdown time, the canning line was crucial to keep us going. Yeah. The yeah. only ones we really run in 12s is our hard seltzer. And then we did it the first time around. We did our Cream or Reserve, which is our light American ale. It's kind yes, of like I had that actually. It was really good. Yeah, so that-, that Caramel and- The yes. caramel uh, vanilla oak character. Yes, to it. very good. Uh, that was a beer that we just, it was an experiment one-off type thing. We might do it, probably definitely you could do it again like once a year, but um, we took our base house uh, light ale, which is like kind of our introductory beer to, to craft beer drinkers. We get a lot of older folks that come in here that um, are just like kind of getting into craft beer a little bit, uh, trying to get them off that Bud Light, that course, oh, yeah. you know, the course yep. banquets and stuff like that. So that's kind of like our yingling comparison, um, but still on the craft beer realm. Of yes, the yep. And Cremo was actually a brewery that was in New Britain from 1905 to 1958, so it kind of pays a little homage to like what the original uh, local you know, brewery of the town was. And we took that beer and we aged it in bourbon barrels for about two months. Wow. It's a very light beer. You don't want to go too heavy with like the bourbon characteristics. Pulled it out and we can condition, so we canned it, let it sit for another two months to kind of really mellow out. It's a different aspect to a beer. It has like a lot, it's a lot of caramel. 
vanilla and like the oak flavor inside yeah, of it. Yeah, yep. It pulls for out. Sure. Those are, uh, I think those are Jack Daniels barrels, so. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, very clean brew house, all automated too, so it runs off an iPad. Um, trying to automate some of the process stuff here, but you know, we removed all the paper, everything's digital, so all of our brew sheets are all digital. Uh, keeps track of all the timestamps on everything, uh, scheduling. The brewers have full access control up here. This, this is a four vessel brew house, uh, so essentially you can almost brew like three beers at the same time. Wow. So basically, to fill one of these tanks, we have to brew four batches. So it's like a basically a step process in the automation. You even got the uh, the, the logo on your glass cap there. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spent a good chunk of money they, they put it on that for you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice nice lounge area. Yeah, little lounge you area know, back here. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's talk about some beers here. So first of all, I just want to say I'm here with Mike, the owner of Alvarium. And he just brought me through a beautiful tour of the whole brewing section um, and your your event room. Yeah. And then in the beginning of the video was the uh, the coffee brew room. Yep. So so now let's talk about beers. What's going on? Like, what do you got coming up this summer for some you know newer beers that we could be uh, excited for? Yeah. So our anniversary is coming up at the end of June here. Uh, five years of coming up on like the last weekend in June. We got two new beers that we're going to be releasing for their anniversary. Um, so one of them is a big double APA, uh, New England style hoppy and juicy. The cool aspect about it is um, we buy all our hops from a supplier called Yakima Chief out in Yakima Valley, Washington. And we have a good relationship with them. And we got to uh, bring in some hops here that are on a trial basis from them. So they have a hop that uses like liquid nitrogen process called cryo hops. It's a blend of free hops and then there's a new product out there from a different company called Phantasm Powder. Oh, okay. I don't know if you've ever heard it before. No, I've not. Uh, so it's the skin of white wine grapes like powderized. Oh, wow. And so what this, these two companies... Powderized, like they, they dehydrate it? Yeah. Wow. So it's a really cool aspect. It adds that like white wine characteristic to some of our products. But the Cryo Hops is like the concentrated lupulin powder of hops. So super like dank, super juicy. And uh, these two companies got together and they mixed the products together and like basically froze them into cryogenically frozen hops. Wow. Um, so we have like three different hop combinations. It's a Citra Mosaic Simcoe blended with 30% Phantasm 30 powder. Um, we That's also so use cool. a new yeast strain, um, different from our house strain here, called Cosmic Punch by Omega Yeast. With those two combinations together, uh, that yeast produces massive like mango notes. This should have like like massive like papaya and citrus and like, like white wine characteristic. It's gonna be a massive like juice bomb and so, so all of this is just screaming like craft. Like this yeah. is the definition of craft beer. You're really just taking like crazy ingredients and just like doing what you can with it to create something just tasteful like so that that one would be um the the wine skin dehydrated that was a new england ipa you said yeah, this is that's a uh, powder yeah, that comes off the grapes of uh the, and, and it's being brewed for a new england ipa yeah, they brewed for a new england ipa yeah. that's really cool yeah that's really cool yeah so it'll probably be like very light in color very bright in color like bright pale straw like yes. yellowish color yep. uh, a little bit of residual sweetness left over from the double IPA. So all that stuff combined together should be a nice, like, huge fruit bomb of an IPA. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and then the, the second beer we have coming out towards the end of this month is going to be um, in, infusing our house roasted coffee now. Um, so we're going to select a few barrels out of our barrel storage room and uh, then blend that with a chocolate peanut butter and coffee. So it's going to be like a 10, 11% uh, bourbon barrel aged stout. And with the coffee that you brew here. Yeah, coffee yeah. brewed here. So we're going to use that peanut butter coffee that oh, we yeah. kind of came up with with actual liquid peanut butter. We blend all together in the finishing process. That sounds so good. Huge like dessert style. Yeah, pastry, uh, that stout. sounds amazing. Yeah. Whenever you make that, man, message me. I will be here. I want to try that. Yeah, that'll be a limited run. That'll only be like 300 bottles or so. Wow, really? Yeah, small batch run. It's we we do is we we have a, like probably 40, 50 barrels aging, and we'll pull two or three at a clip, and we put them in our small um, blending tank. And that allows us to do some adjunct blending 
and create these small batch runs of beers that we want to try out. Like it's like craft basket. And this obviously won't be in package stores. If you want to buy it, you'd have to come here. It's all here. Okay. We'll yep. have some on draft for sampling, some bottles to go. I will and definitely try to grab one of those bottles for you guys. I'm, I'm going to try my hardest. Hey, Mike, I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. I've been here multiple times. Their beer is amazing. And as you can tell, the craft is real here. So, um, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for coming out. This is their traditional Cremo ale. It's got caramel malt and flaked corn. Definitely taste the caramel. This is really good, super smooth. I mean, there's not a hot, lot of hops to it. It's kind of just a light, crisp ale with a little bit of sweetness to it. It's pretty good. It's a nice summer beer. So yeah, this is their flagship beer. This is the fresh, it's a New England IPA. Checking in at 6.5%, mosaic and citra hops. Mm. Yeah. It's definitely super fresh, refreshing. So I've already had this beer rated in on untapped because this is, you know, I come to Alvarium uh, often. I've had a lot of the beers. I really like this brewery, so. Um, I did rate this a four. It really is. It's it's light, but it's got a lot of flavor, which is for me really hard to tackle when you when you make an IPA that's super super light but have this much flavor. Um, it's really hard to come across uh, a New England IPA that's like this. That's just light, crisp, but a lot of flavor. They really tackled this beer. So yeah, this is a this is a solid four for me. I'm untapped. So. This is going to be the sour of the day. Um, you know how I feel about sours. Uh, not my favorite style, but I have to drink them because I know a lot of you like them. And after drinking them for a while, I have been starting to like them more and more. This is called the Sucker Punched. So it's actually pretty light. It's at 4.8%. Um, so yeah, strawberry lemon. Ooh, it smells sour. That's sour. Oh yeah, that's, that puckers the cheeks. Ooh. Man, if you guys like sours, you would really like this. I do taste strawberry and I do taste lemon. That, that sour is really coming from the lemon and then there's like a, like a strawberry aftertaste that comes in through afterwards. So it's like up front is very lemon sour and then after is kind of just like a strawberry sweet aftertaste. It's actually really good. This is a delicious beer. Um, I'm, I'm amazed by actually how much I like this. It is very, very sour, which would probably throw me back from like wanting to get this and drink it all the time because you know, it is very sour, but the, the flavors there, if you guys are really into sours, I think that a lot of you will really like this one. This is something that you guys should try if you like your sours. Yeah, I'm gonna give this a solid four for, for the sour category. This is very delicious. So I'm with Sean. He's the owner of uh, Max Woodfire Barbecue. What's happening? So what, what, what we got going on today? What are you guys doing? Ah, uh, we got uh, we had a bunch of brisket. We have uh, we still have some pulled pork, some pulled chicken. Uh, you know, we sold out we sold out of the premium stuff pretty quick, but uh, we're just getting ready to pull another pork for some sandwiches and some some meat platters and. Uh, Getting ready to rock and roll. Keep, so, keep it going. This is your first time at Alvarium. Yeah, first time here at Alvarium. Okay. Nice. Yep. Nice. Uh, we were at Coventry Farmers Market last weekend. Uh, we'll be there again next weekend. Uh, we got a bunch of bunch of events coming up on that side of the river. So uh, we'll be in Stafford for uh, Farm Day for the July in the Sky. I'm not gonna lie, man. I smell that smoke coming through, and it smells delicious. Man. Yeah, we're cooking all everything, all wood fired all the way through. Uh, cooking all strictly red oak and control the temperature a little bit better you don't get big temperature spikes so so we're we're definitely gonna try some of this and I'm, I, I guarantee you it's gonna taste amazing I could already tell by the smoke they're set up they know what they're doing yeah like this is this is legit man Yeah, we're doing so, it as legit as we can um, yeah. my wife makes all the sides and sauces from scratch so uh, everything is handmade handmade with love <laughs> let's talk about your setup what do you got here all right so we got uh, this is just our, our, our hot holding oven so we keep all our meats in here 
keep it all rolling. We had uh, seven pork butts in here. We did a couple of briskets. Uh, I don't know, we had 25 pounds of pork belly burn ends and I don't know, about the same of uh, Chucky's burn ends earlier, but yeah. sold out of those. So we can keep that thing. And as you can see, it just, it just holds perfectly at 160, which is a great temperature. It keeps all the meat nice and moist. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. I'm familiar with the elbow because yeah. it's greasy. <laughs> Greasy hands, about to, about, to, about to bust open a pork butt right now, so. So we wrap everything in butcher paper, because uh, it doesn't steam it like it would if uh, you wrapped it in foil. Wow. There we go, I got a little money muscle for you here, buddy. Oh my God, here we go. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Hold on. Right here. Bro. Juicy and delicious? Oh my god. <laughs> you gotta uh, go check out some of the sauces that my wife makes. Uh, they're, they're all from scratch, all handmade. Yo. Max Wood Fire Barbecue. There we go, man. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you, brother. Thanks for stopping by. So, uh, yeah, we're here at Alvarium with my with my buddy, uh, Brew Brothers CT. I mean, it's nice to meet you, it's dude. It's great to be here. Nice to meet you, yeah, too, man, though. Definitely, dude. Definitely. So, let's let's talk about you, man. Brew Brothers CT. You, you're a vlogger here in Connecticut. We're both vloggers. You know, yeah. we met on Instagram. Um, yeah. I do breweries. You do more pubs. And, and, you know, so talk about it. My goal is to find places around Connecticut that take pride in the beer that they serve. And I feel that a lot of places that they're just churning out beer after beer, they might serve you a short glass or the tap lines might not be clean. But there are some places that I found, if you'll see some of my earlier videos, that take pride in the pints and the beers that they serve. So that's my goal, to find sort of the best bars, pubs, and breweries around Connecticut. That, that, that serve high quality beer. Yeah, high quality. Exactly. And high quality doesn't mean, you know, that it's craft all the time. It could be a high quality Budweiser that has a cold glass, the tap lines are clean. So and your whole thing is, is you're you're not yeah. testing the quality of the beer. You're testing the quality of the beer served from the place. Because yes. there's a difference between yes. even though in the craft beer world we all know Budweiser is shit, but there's a difference between I don't think that. So. <laughs> He's. <laughs> I love Budweiser. <laughs> Agree to disagree. I guess that's just gonna be a BR relation. Anyways. Yeah. His whole thing is, you know, if you're gonna serve Budweiser, you can serve it in 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 a low quality, and you can serve yeah. it into a high quality. So yep. his whole thing is, if you're going to a pub in Connecticut, yep. he's gonna find the best places that find, that serve the higher quality taps. So like, yep. it doesn't matter the style of beer you get, it doesn't exactly. matter the craft, it doesn't matter of any of that. It matters on whether they're serving good quality or not. Yep. Like in general, through their tap lines, are you getting a crisp, cold, refreshing? Yeah quality beer. Exactly. And what I'm going to try to do is, let's say I go to the one restaurant in Random Town, Connecticut is an Italian restaurant. I'm going to get the Italian beer. Or yes. if I go to a Mexican restaurant, hopefully the Dos Equis that comes out the tap is fine and crisp and it's served cold. So you're you know? trying to so, keep up with the cuisine. Yeah. 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 You know what so I mean? So if I go to a Mexican restaurant in, I don't know, whatever town, then hopefully what they serve is high quality. Now and when, I'm not really that picky about have necessarily needing to drink a craft beer every time I go out. I'm fine with Bud Light. If it's a sports bar, if they're serving cold pitchers, hey, I'll, that's great. Okay. So you're trying to hit up every town in Connecticut. Yeah. That's, that's your goal. So how many towns are you at right now? <laughs> Only at four. So he's, yo, this is the thing. He's he's new into this. Yeah. So you guys, like, you want to you wanna start following his journey. You start right now. He just started this. You're at four towns? Only at four in the first four towns many, that I showed. Did you find out how many towns there are in Connecticut? There are over 160 towns in Okay, 160 towns, yeah. and he's only at four. Yeah. So if you guys want to watch this journey on him going to the best pubs. Now, best pubs, you talk, you know, we talked about the quality of the beer coming through the lines, but you're also probably talking about the quality of the food also, right? Not really. No, just no, the beer. Just the beer. Just the beer. That's an added bonus. Just but, the beers. And also a 
stipulation is that I want to go to local places where no no restaurant chains, no restaurant families. Okay. Uh, unless it's unless it's the original of that restaurant family. Um, no chains. Unless uh, also if if, if that's uh, all they have. Yeah. If Chili's is the only thing they have in Valentine, Connecticut, then. Then we're going to yeah, because there, yeah, there are small there are towns up on chips and dip. Yeah, know. there are small towns that don't have a lot. Yeah, like I grew fine. up in Terryville, Connecticut. Yeah, the only thing that we have there would be Shoot Gates. Which yeah, you should okay. go there. I will. You should go to Appreciate Shoot Gates. The suggestion. Yeah, um, I haven't been there in a while, but I know when when you go to Shoot Gates, it's a country town. Yeah. When you go to Shoot Gates and you sit at the bar, you're going to be sitting on a horse saddle. Their their seats are horse saddles. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, That's so go to for. Shoot Gates in Terryville. Super fresh. Super fresh. We'll give cheers, it buddy. My, my first time trying this, so cheers. So I've already had this, and I've rated it. But I'm curious to see what you think, man. Drinkable. <laughs> Drinkable. It has that hazy New England IPA oh, taste. Yes, for sure. Which... I've grown accustomed to, not my favorite. I prefer the piney West Coast style, but hey, soft. It's smooth. Yes. It's smooth. Yeah. And I, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure this is 9.1%. Okay. Hold on, let me, let me double check. We're getting the, check the scorecard. Yeah. 9.1%. So right. they call this a double IPA. Some people might consider this a triple. It all depends because like the the percentages are different for certain people. So yeah. if this is a double IPA, it's a very high double IPA. It's bordering triple. It's really bordering triple. Some people okay. might consider this a triple, depending on who you talk to, you know. But they're saying it's a double. We're gonna say it's a double, but it's a very high double IPA. You're talking their fresh is a 6.5, and they went from a double IPA straight to 9.1. That's a pretty big jump, going from a from, from a single to their double. So going from 6.5 to 9.1. It does not taste like a 9.1% beer. And that's exactly what I said in my in my yeah. review. It, it, it you Because usually you taste the booze, it tastes like almost like a, I, I want to say a wine or like a, like a porter or something like that, yeah. This is the type of beer that could fuck you up because you don't think you're drinking something high, but really, you are. So it's like, you, you think that you can drink a lot of these and if you do, good for you, but you're gonna be fucked up. Okay, you wanna hear my CCSU experience? Yeah. So, so you've been to Elmer's? I've never been to Elmer's. No. Nope, never All been right. Elmer's. Alright, let's hear your CCSU experience. So this is my CCSU experience. Uh, one, I've never gone to college. I started working a full-time job three days after I graduated high school. Same job I have now, I'm a CNC machinist. But my best friend uh, was at CCSU and there was a time and period where our company got slow and I was 19 years old and I was getting furloughed, which is a fancy word of saying laid off, but I would get paid by the company. And during those times, I would just live at his dorm at CCSU. So, never went to Elmer's. How does roommates feel about that? Oh, they didn't care, man. They oh, all cool. liked me. I was a Good. rapper, so like I used to rap all the time and shit, and like you know that was kind of cool. Met a lot of cool people. I actually this is where you need to cut in one of your old videos, like right now, like a 10 second clip. Okay, you know I got expensive taste. Runs in the family, get money to just waste. We spend it up on the base, put boats up on the lakes, and it's been that way since the first candle on my cake. Yeah, so like that was like a chorus. Solid. Oh, okay, solid. solid. Getting this is man, you're bringing a lot out. Yeah. Of me. This is a personal life. Damn. Anyways, CCSU was a fucking a party for me, but this is my CCSU experience. At 2, 3 in the morning, we would be like longboarding, high as shit, drunk as hell, just longboarding through the parking garages and like the, the streets around New Britain. And then we would go to Domino's and we would ask them if they had pizzas that someone never picked up. We'd get free pizzas every night. And we would always hope- that, So smart. Yeah, we would always hope wow. that it was a buffalo chicken pizza. Uh, so, so we would go to Domino's and we would walk in at like 2 in the morning and be like, hey, did anyone like order a pizza that they didn't 
pick up. We're college students, we don't yeah. got a lot of money. And they would just be like, yeah, man, like we got a large buffalo chicken pizza. Sometimes it wouldn't be, but we would always pray that it was a large buffalo chicken pizza. Yeah. Cause like, dude, it's I know fire. it's, I know no, it's Domino's. Domino's. I know it's Domino's. I'm not picky, as you know. <laughs> I know it's Domino's, but that shit was so it's fire. It's not craft pizza. <laughs> Exactly. But like, dude, college kids just drunk and high as hell. Like, dude, if you can get a free large buffalo chicken pizza from Domino's. So that's what we do every night. Then we would stay up all night, dude, just partying like college kids. Not going to tell you what we did, but we did it all. If you could if you could think of what we did, we did it. We'd wake up at like nine in the morning, hung over as hell. We'd walk across the street. There was a Chinese restaurant. And then right next to the Chinese restaurant would be a, a package store. I would grab a 40 ounce of Budweiser and then go into the Chinese restaurant at nine in the morning and order Chinese. Uh, and I would have my Chinese and my 40 ounce of Budweiser. And as I was eating Chinese, the Chinese truck driver or the, the delivery guy would walk in and be like, oh, Chinese and beer. And, yeah. and I'd be like, yeah, man, we're making this American, all right? Yeah. Like, we're Hell making yeah. this American. That's my CCSU. So, but I've never been to Elmer's. Never been to Elmer's. So it's talk a, about Elmer's. Elmer's is an institution. I went there during my New Britain tour, which I recorded on YouTube. They have renovated the place a lot. It used to be just smaller bar, like a U-shaped bar. And you had a back room area to dance, and they still have beer pong tables set up in the back. Now it's a full, huge circle bar, plenty of tap lines. I think I saw it in one of your videos. And... Happy hour every day, I believe, between three and six. So you can get a 23 ounce domestic draft, you know, Bud Light, Budweiser, Miller Light for four bucks, I think. And it was crisp. It was good. Yeah, it was good. Like mug was cold, beer was great, and I was like, yo. Do they have do they have craft beers there or is it just your like typical college just drink beer type beer? They have how do you call them? Like, I guess they would have like your macro crafts, like Blue Moon to like you know whatever is most popular. Probably two roads. Counterweight, probably two roads. Yeah, okay, they, they okay. had a wide variety of lines. There's at least 20 beers on tap, I would oh, say. Okay. So they're probably gonna have your macro micros. Yep. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. I don't know. I would hope they had had Al Alvarium, but like never know. I'm not. I'm not sure if you're gonna find anything that's smaller than that. But yeah. Shit. Hey man, I appreciate you coming out here and no meeting doubt. me, dude. Definitely. No Brew Brothers CT is Instagram? Yep. YouTube? Instagram and YouTube. Bruce Brothers CT. Hey, give it a follow and a like, please. Take the journey, man. Peace.